Welcome back to Hoffman Tactical. In today's video, I want to share with you a project I did a couple months ago, which is this brooch and press right here. It is composed of 3D printed parts, some aluminum flat stock, lots of hardware, and a uh, steel rod right here for the quill, as well as an actual uh, brooch. I want to share with you guys uh, kind of the construction project on this, how it's put together, because I think it's a interesting use of 3D printing, and you'll find it interesting. It's just printed from PLA, nothing super fancy or exotic. It's just an interesting application, uh, kind of a tool which you don't normally see 3D printed, which I had a particular niche use for, uh, which I'm also going to share with you. There were actually two compounding issues that resulted in me needing to make this broaching press and to start using it. The first one had to do with the aluminum shafting I was using for the last round bolt hood open shaft in the SL9 uh, kits and in my prototypes as well. The pieces I was working with during testing were quite high tolerance. They were, they were uh, just undersized from an eighth of an inch, I think one or two thousandths, and they really worked well for the job. However, when I started using these parts in the kits and buying more of them in bulk, I found that their tolerance was actually quite wide and uh, they weren't nearly as consistent as I was hoping for. That created a few issues, which we'll talk about in a second. The other issue, which was compounding with that, had to do with these little tiny levers. The rear and front last round bolt hold open levers on the SL9. These levers originally had a hex hole in them 3D printed um, as a hex right off the printer, and they were designed to be used right off the printer. In fact, the files are still that way, and it still works fine if you're careful. Um, the problem I was having was printing these parts for the kits um, and in combination with that aluminum hex rod was causing the parts to either be too tight or too loose. The reason you can't dial it in just perfectly is because on a 3D printed hex hole, uh, or really any 3D printed object with a sharp internal corner or external corner, the corner is never exactly sharp. It's always a little bit rounded off. Um, and that's just due to the property of the way FDM 3D printers work. Um, so the result was that when you installed the hex shaft, you had to kind of uh, broach out those corners to make it fit properly. If the hex printed hex uh, hole in the levers was too tight, the shaft would be too difficult to install. If it was if it was tuned so that the holes were a little bit bigger, so the hex was easier to install, only the very corners of the hex shaft would engage, and you would end up over time getting your levers loosening up with their fitment over the shaft, which would add too much play to the system, which would cause reliability issues. Throw into that the issues with the hex shaft being uh, of a pretty wide tolerance and width, and you'd end up with some shafts which were very difficult to install and some shafts which were so loose that the system did not work reliably due to the play in the system. The best solution was to get a custom last round bolt hold open shaft made. They work really well. The flats on them are precisely the right width apart. The tolerance is all perfect. Um, they're steel, so they're much tougher during shipment and installation. So they really do work well. So what I've ended up doing is broaching these levers using the broaching press with an eighth inch uh, brooch, a hex brooch. And uh, then I use the custom made shaft in the kits along with that and it's worked just fine. So that was the solution and that's why I needed the brooch so I could start get, get, getting those hex holes nice, super crispy um, because the 3D printing right off the printer wasn't quite good enough to get consistent results. If you wanna make your own SL9 without using my kit, which is completely possible, the um, little printed uh, levers right off the printer with the hex pockets in them work just fine with an ordinary Allen key or the aluminum hex shaft as long as you're careful with the print and if they're too loose you reprint it with slightly adjusted settings so a little bit higher flow to make it a little bit tighter and you spend some time to use the hex shaft as a little uh, ad hoc brooch to clean those parts out before you install them so it's just it's a little bit more work but it still works just fine it's in this particular application and they required tighter tolerances due to me not wanting to hand fit all of those parts individually prior to uh, assembling the kit. So layer adhesion and the layer orientations is what really dictated the design. So I opted to print the main body from uh, two different separate pieces, split down the middle and printed flat on that middle surface. And that allowed the uh, layers to run vertically up and down the, uh, the part and they are in the appropriate direction where they will resist the forces uh, in the best way possible with the least reliance on layer adhesion. Um, they're also clamped together by the two vertical posts that support the, the, uh, the main lever, and uh, that also helps eliminate any issues with layer adhesion uh, that we could run into. The actual quill head, the, uh, the guide for the quill, the quill, of course, is the vertical uh, piece of shafting, uh, round steel shafting that actually supports the brooch and moves up and down. The, that actual head needed to be printed in a different orientation so that the internal surface was smooth and parallel uh, in order to guide the head properly. So that part I decided to break off into a separate body 
uh, which is then bolted on in a different orientation. And it is um, also optimized for layer adhesion because of that. So it's sort of a bolt up design. There's actually three main 3D printed components uh, in the body and uh, all held together with bolts. So the downside of that is there is quite a bit of hardware needed. I do not spend a lot of time optimizing the design. So the hardware lengths are just stock hardware lengths and they're not all even. So some of the bolts are barely long enough. Some of them hang out half of an inch with sharp threads. Definitely not optimal. I wouldn't want that on a finished consumer product. But for what I was trying to do, it wasn't worth spending that amount of time trying to refine those little details. Another challenging part of the design was the actual metal structure above. 3D printing the structure, the levers and the linkages would have been possible, but would have been a lot of work and definitely not optimized. So this design, we are using 3D printed plastic parts where it makes a lot of sense to use them. And then for parts where it makes sense just to make them from metal because they're relatively simple geometry and easily fabricated, um, I went with metal because that's what made sense. So just sticking with 3D printing for everything. If it doesn't make sense, use the appropriate material for uh, that particular application. All of the joints actually use custom made brass bushings. I cut them on the lathe over here, um, which worked out pretty good. Um, that was the only like custom metal part I had to make other than just fabricating the leather levers, uh, which was really just drilling on a drill press and reaming the holes. So that has allowed for a really smooth action. So nothing is running directly on the bolts. So there's a brass bushing in each of the hinges that's being sandwiched into the reamed holes on the aluminum levers um, and runs pretty smoothly in there. So that was really quite helpful. I did use 3D printed spacers in the hinges to uh, keep everything the right distances apart and to uh, try to hold the quill centered uh, and not let it move around because it is an index. Uh, the quill is indexed and it's important that it doesn't rotate um, and affect the hex hole on the levers. You'll notice something I've done is I didn't use pockets for the nuts. So I actually ended up leaving the nuts exposed on the outside, kind of along the lines of what I mentioned earlier with a lack of a lot of design refinement. But the reason I did that, did that was actually a structural one because I wanted the washers to be used to help distribute the load to the plastic to uh, help clamp as much plastic together as possible to get as much rigidity as possible. Uh, using nuts that are insert into a pocket is really slick and great when you can use it, but it does um, kind of miss a bunch of material. There's a big slice of layers there which is not actually being clamped and that is not optimized for structural efficiency. So I opted to put the nuts on the outside with washers to help make it more structurally efficient. And uh, I think that worked out quite well. The jigs are the parts that actually hold the levers. They're arguably the most important part of the machine. And uh, those are also 3D printed. They have a little platform on them, which just allows for consistency. And they're bolted down to the deck of the press with a couple 1032 screws that go into a couple captured nuts inside the press. The jigs are the area of the machine that really could use the most improvement moving forward. Right now, they're just, you press the part into it. It's a pocket with a few indexing marks that hold the part at the proper angle. You press the lever in, the part, and uh, then you run the brooch and you use a little screwdriver to pop the lever out. It could use a better rejection mechanism as well as there are some things I could do to basically rotate the part out of the jig. That would make them a bit easier to, to put in and out. Right now it works just fine for the pretty small production that we have to do with it, but there's definitely some optimization that could happen there with the jigs. Hope you guys found today's video interesting, um, talking about this broaching press. We will be doing some filament testing. I'm actually doing it right now, comparing a bunch of nylons, some new filaments that are coming out and have been out for a little while that I've been using that I think are very promising. So stay tuned for that. We're gonna be kind of trying to show you what the best filament is going forward uh, for printing firearms components and other parts. We'll see uh, how close we get to that goal, but stay tuned for that one, it should be interesting. I'll catch you again next time, and thank you so much for watching.